Hi everyone, I'm currently working on a larger project that's taking me ages to finish, and if you're interested in that, I'll show you a sneak peek at the end of the video. In the meantime, I've been looking for a super simple way of getting my students started with Arduino programming, and Seed Studios offered to send me one of their Grove beginner kits uh, to have a play around with. So today we'll have a look at how it works and use some of the sensors on the board to make a, a fun game. Along the way, we'll look at how to get graphics onto the OLED and go beyond getting simple bleeps out of the buzzer. The kit itself seems very well put together and it features an Arduino clone in the center here based on the Atmel 328P and this is the same chip we find in the Uno so this is an Uno in the center for all intents and purposes. Around the outside it has a bunch of modules and we have an LED, a buzzer, an OLED, a push button, rotary potentiometer, we have a light sensor, a sound sensor, temperature and humidity, air pressure and a three axis accelerometer. And the great thing about these modules is they're pre-wired into the board, so you don't have to do any wiring to get started with this. However, should you want to separate the modules out, and I haven't tried this yet, but apparently they do pop out, and then you can wire them back in very easily using these little four pin connectors here. Having a look on the wiki, it seems like they produce a huge number of different modules. Uh, so this system should be incredibly expandable okay, going forwards. And these modules cover simple things like ultrasonic distance ranges or a vibration motor here, uh, to really advanced stuff like a Doppler radar or multi-channel gas sensor, um, capable of detecting carbon monoxide and ethyl alcohol and VOCs, all the way up to whatever on earth this is. Now, this is certainly not the cheapest way to obtain some of these sensors, but there is a definite advantage in terms of ease of use. Um, importantly, every single module comes with example code to show how to use it, great documentation in well-written English, and full board schematics, and you definitely wouldn't get that from your uh, average AliExpress seller. When we first plug it in, the beginning kit comes with a demonstration program that reads the input from various sensors. Apologies for the flickering of the OLED display here, by the way. It doesn't look like this in real life. And I've tried messing about with the frame rate, but I can't get the uh, flickering to go away. So you can see here it's measuring the light intensity. And there's a light sensor just here. So if we cover this up, we should find the light intensity drops and then it increases again. So to change to a different sensor, this took me a few seconds to figure out, you press and hold the button. It beeps, and then we can change using the potentiometer between the various sensors. So let's look at temperature and humidity. And we see it's currently 25 degrees and 43% humidity. And let's have a little look at the accelerometers as well. And here you can see the acceleration displayed on a little square. And as I tilt the board, we should be able to move that little sprite up and down within that square. So playing about with this is what got me thinking that it might be quite fun to implement a game of Simon, uh, that memory game that was inexplicably popular in the, the 1970s and 80s. Simon. Johnny, you're the challenge of a lifetime. I want you, Simon. Simon. So I've now written some code, and if this looks a little bit different to you than your normal Arduino IDE, that's because I'm using Visual Micro with Visual Studio after I saw Andreas Spice use it in one of his videos. I do really recommend it, so if you're interested, I'll link to his uh, video in the description. Now, an easy way to put together code for simple games like this is to split your games into a series of states. And in this case, I'm going to use five states, which I've declared here as an enum. Now, when using an enum like this, each value is really just an integer. For example, start, uh, this is where we're going to start the game, we're going to wait for the start button to be pressed, um, and it just has a value of zero. Display actions will just have an integer value of one, listen actions will be two, one will be three, and lost will be four. So in this case, we're just using the enum uh, to create labels to make our code more readable. Our loop function then just contains a switch statement where it looks at the game state and it runs whatever code is necessary for that particular state. So when we're starting, it will just run this code here and we'll keep looping this code until we set the game state to be a different state like display actions. And then it will jump into this section and start running this set of code instead. So let's have a play with it and see how it's working so far. Let's have a play then. So we've got it on our start screen at the moment. So let's press the button to start and let's see if we can uh, play this game. Okay, so button first, button twist. Button twist to the right. Okay, button twist to the right. 
light. Button, twist, to right, light, twist. Yay. <laughs> and I've only set this to do five at the moment because it makes it a little bit easier to win. Uh, let's see what happens if we lose. So let's do this wrong on purpose. So we've got button first of all. Button, button. Oh, and we got to level one. So that's great. And it does work. The logic is working exactly as it should. But it looks a bit drab. Um, so let's try and put some polish onto this. And uh, we should take advantage of this graphical OLED and produce maybe some icons for that. We could also get our buzzer to do something more interesting than just beep. Uh, so let's start off with the graphics. The example for using the OLED on the Seed Wiki is a cut down version of the U8G2 OLED library. And this cut down version is listed down here. It's called U8x8. And this can only display text. And that's what we've been using so far. Now, if we want to implement graphics and pretty things up a little bit, we'll have to upgrade to using the, the full library, the UHG2 library. Now, UHG2 supports monochrome images, which are in the X bitmap format. And this is nothing more than a bunch of bytes representing which pixels are on and which pixels are off. Now, some graphics programs like GIMP support saving to X bitmap natively, but I'm going to use some free online tools to make them instead. For making icons like this, I like to use pixel art. And you can see here I've drawn a uh, up arrow. We could use this for the tilt forward action. And all I'm going to do here is save it as a PNG file. And then I'm going to open it up in this website here. So you click on convert image to XPM. We find the thing we just saved. And we make sure that these settings are correct. The width and the height have to be right or this won't work properly. And we press convert. And now you can see we actually have all of the bytes we need for our X bitmap image. So I've copied the bits into my project here and I actually created a new file called media.h and that's to prevent throwing all this junk into the main code here. So what I'm going to do is include media.h from the main code and then I'm going to put all of my images just in a separate file, just keeps things a little bit neater. So you can see these are all the bits here and we have to declare it as a constant unsigned 8-bit integer and then give it a name twist bits for this particular one. And then we write u8x8 underscore progmem. What that does is it saves this image into the program memory uh, rather than the RAM of the Arduino. There's a lot more space in the program memory than there is in the RAM. Finally, we can display it in the main code by using the OLED.drawXBMP command. And here we've got the X position, the Y position, and the width, the height, and a reference to the image that we want to draw. Uh, it looks a bit complicated, the reference I've used here, because I've put all of my images into an array, which you can see down here. Uh, and that way I can select which image I want by indexing into that array. Let's have a look at our nice shiny new graphics then. And again, apologies for the flickering of the screen here. Button, button, twist, button, twist, to the right. Think you get the idea and that looks much much nicer than just having that text on the screen. Next thing to move on to then is to have a look at the sound. We are somewhat limited in what we can do using the Arduino tone command but we should be able to get it to play some better tunes. So I'm going to keep the original beep but I also want some sounds from performing an action correctly, losing the game and winning the game. Now as I'm in no way musically gifted I'm going to borrow some sounds uh, from Super Mario Brothers. So let's start with something simple and have the coin sound trigger when an action is performed correctly. So the coin sound sounds something like this. Probably sounds quite familiar to a lot of you. And what I've done is recreated this in this online sequencer program. Now, not the most difficult tune to recreate, and it should sound pretty much the same. Now you can see from the sequencer that we've got B5 and E6. So we need to change that into an Arduino tone command. To do that, if we go back to tone here, and if we click on tone melody, you can see there's actually a list of all the notes. Go scroll down to the bottom of here, all the notes and the frequency that they correspond to. So, for example, this uh, coin sequence has B5 and then E6. So, I need to play a tone on B5. So, we know that's going to have a frequency of 980, 988 Hz. And the other one is E6, which you can also find in this list, and that's going to have a frequency of. 1,319 hertz, 1 1.3 kilohertz. So if we convert that into our code, we can see we play a tone of 988 hertz, 50 milliseconds, followed by a tone of 1,319 hertz for 100 milliseconds. 
When playing a melody like this, you'll also need to use a delay, as otherwise the second tone will just cancel out the first. So the first tone is 50 milliseconds, I have to delay for 50 milliseconds before doing the next tone. For losing the game, uh, let's go for something a little bit more ambitious. Uh, so I'm thinking the Mario death sound, which should sound something like this. And if we look at that in terms of code, here we can see the lose music, and here we can see the win theme. And this one did take a little bit of time to, uh, to type out. So let's put all that together then and see what the final result looks like. Oh, that was silly. So my overall thoughts on the Grove Beginner Kit then. If you're happy wiring things on breadboards and, and using badly specified parts from AliExpress, then this probably isn't the product for you. However, if you're just starting out with Arduino, want things to just work and appreciate the documentation and tutorials that you get as part of this uh, ecosystem, then I do actually think it's quite a compelling idea. As usual, the code for Simon, links to the software tools I use today and an Amazon link if you're interested in purchasing one of these, are all in the description box below. And finally, I'll leave you with a very short peek at the bigger project that I wish I had more time to work on right now. See you next time.